a court judgment, we've immediately taken action to pay. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just to, just to follow up on your comment, the uh, actual reimbursement from the state in the last fiscal year was, 50, they normally would reimburse 50%, they reimbursed 15.39%, and this year the state is reimbursing us 7.42%. So compare that to the 50% and you'll see where, where the, the challenge came from. Now, another comment I'll make has got nothing necessarily to do with the contract, but what it has to do with is state aid that comes into the town uh, has been in the form of three basic categories, Chapter 70 for schools, the Quinn Bill, and unrestricted state aid. But if you really want to look at it, it's an amount of money that comes to the state, and that money has been cut. You know, if you read recently, well, Chapter 70 was held the same as last year, but the town took about a $100,000 cut in unrestricted local aid plus a further reduction in the Quinn Bill. This is what we're dealing with, and I think uh, Mrs. Castro pointed out that, you know, we should be banging on the doors of our legislators and complaining about the fact that uh, state mandates, unfunded state mandates, uh, are unfair and are certainly having an impact on our ability to provide services to the community. Uh, Mr. Prisco. Um, I just want to say that um, since we agreed to pay this, um, you know, Greg's staff, I, I really want to send a, a congratulations and a, a much appreciation to them for all their hard work because in the middle of doing this, they've been doing the budgets. And I, I want you to know that they really have made this a priority for you guys to get this done. Um, getting these numbers wrapped up and making sure we give you exactly, you, know, you don't miss anything. They have worked diligently on this. I have seen the correspondence going back and forth. So I really do appreciate the extra time they put in for this, and especially you too, Greg. I know you put, uh, put some extra hours in yourself. Um, and I know, speak, I'm not gonna speak for the police department, but I know they appreciate it as well. And uh, so thank you for a great effort. I know this was not easy to pull all this together. So thank you. Greg, you had suggested we have a uh, motion for? Yeah, motion yeah, to. Mr. Chairman, I suggest you close the public hearing. I'll do that. Yeah. Yes. But I didn't see that you ha he has a motion. No, no. no I don't. Uh, what I'm suggesting is rather than um, the motion would be to recommend Article 1 on the March 14th special town meeting. Okay. Any other comments from the audience before I close the public hearing? Yeah, I rule the public hearing closed. Mr. Prisco. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve Article 1 funding the Quinville payments dated March 7th. 2010, 2011, as written. Motion by Mr. Prisco. Do I hear a second? Well, it's not as written. What says written? Uh, oh, I'm, I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm winging it. So you got to help okay. me out here. Uh, I have it's it in front of me. It's written, written in the warrant. Yeah. As written in the warrant article. Yeah. Just warrant. move to recommend Sorry. Article One. You know, just move to recommend Article One, and again, okay. the funding source we can. It's pretty much as we discussed. So just move to recommend. See, you should never let a rookie do this. Yeah, this <laughs> uh, on the motion to uh, that the boat, uh, the board, uh, excuse me, that the board approve second. Article One of uh, the special town meeting of uh, March 14th. Do we hear a second? Second. Motion by Mr. Frisco, second by Mr. O'Leary. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Next item on our agenda is a changing of the license site for the Thompson Club. Um, board members, you have a notice of a public hearing. I'll read it. In accordance with Chapter 138 of the Mass General Laws, a public hearing will be held by the Board of Selectmen in Room 14, Town Hall, 235 North Street, on Monday, March 7, 2011, at 8 p.m., on the application of the Thompson Club Incorporated for a change of license type from a club license to a common vitular all-alcohol license. The license is to be exercised at 20 Elm Street, North Reading, Massachusetts, Business is two floors totaling 20,000 square feet. First floor, locker rooms, toilets, utility room, and member area. Second floor, clock tail lounge, ballroom, and dining room. Um, in summary, the, the uh, public hearing is intended as a club license. There's limited membership and access to that facility. By transferring the license to a common victual or all alcohol, it would presume that the facility would be open to the public at all operating hours and at alcoholic beverages would be available to all. Okay, I will open the public hearing. 
said purpose. Anyone in the audience uh, here to speak for a change in venue for the Thompson Club? Afternoon. I'm the manager of the club, John Wiley, so if anyone has any questions, be more than happy to name, answer them. Name and address. Uh, I heard your name and address. Oh. Uh, 16 Heritage Drive, Salem, Mass. What are your planned hours of operation? Uh, right now, we're uh, for being our normal hours, which would be uh, Tuesday through Sunday. Right now, we're open Thursday through Sunday. In opening and closing time? Uh, 11.30 to 9, 10 o'clock. Well, look, it would be to midnight. It would be in correspond to the local license. I didn't see that on the It should be on the bottom left. Oh, yes, I see it now. Yep. I'm sorry, what is it? Uh, it says, um, last call, 1240 a.m. All glasses off the table by 1 a.m. That's how many days? All patrons off the premise by 1.15 a.m. That's seven days? This one says that hours of alcohol beverages may be sold uh, from 8 a.m. to 1 a.m. weekdays, except Sundays, <coughs> which is noon to 1 a.m. Is that consistent with some of I think they are pretty much. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, why why the change from a club to a uh, basically we would like to you know, open the facility to the restaurant to the public on Sundays try to give them more of a, a feel of the club maybe promote membership sales things of that nature you're not able to do that under the club license no no according to the uh, uh, the board and the local licenses it has to be uh, has to be a common vehicular we looked but, into it. But as a club license, I mean, can't you uh, have guests? You know, you can invite guests. You can to have come. guests, but you, you, they have to be accompanied by a member. Yeah. Um, was there um, notification to abutters on the on this license on the public hearing? Because this is a this is a significant change uh, in operation. Could become a, not that. It, is, we put it, it in the paper. We had it, the 10-day notice. It could be a, a significant change uh, impact to the neighborhood in relation to uh, the amount of traffic and. and uh, under the uh, under under the stipulations we were supposed to follow with the uh, with the selectment secretary, yeah. uh, Karen, uh, we followed all those processes and we filed all the pr paperwork and what was asked on our part we did. Right. Okay. I, and I don't recall specifically what that would have been, whether it be, uh, you know, sometimes some public hearings require like a certified mail with anybody within 300 feet, right. but I don't think that was the case in this particular instance. Is that, that true? That's correct. Not in this yeah. instance. Yeah. Hey, I, I see this as a, as a significant change in operation. It could become a significant change in operation for the uh, facility, uh, which could have an impact on the neighborhood, uh, a substantial impact on the neighborhood in relation to, you know, amount of traffic hours of operation that from what you're currently uh, utilizing That's right, yeah, yeah. and uh, so before I vote on it well our, our, our hours are going to stay the same have they've always been right now we're in our winter hours we're only open Thursday through Sunday I understand that but you know at some point in time this would provide you with an opportunity basically to operate a restaurant sure. restaurant to the lounge, general public not just to, to the general public from 8 a.m. to 1 1 a.m. Uh, you know, at your decision and your discretion under the license that we would be issuing. Uh, I think if we're uh, uh, going to be entertaining this, uh, and again, I apologize for not maybe uh, coming up to speed <coughs> more quickly and conveying my thoughts to you uh, beforehand, but I'm a little bit reluctant to, uh, to okay it this evening uh, without a little more thought on my part as well as uh, a little more additional notification to the immediate neighborhood as far as the potential impact. And again, the current board there may determine right now that you want to just keep the current hours of operation and limited hours of operation, but it doesn't preclude them if we give you this license of just opening it up and advertising and having a significant influx of uh, yeah. business into the neighborhood. So, uh, yeah, And it's I, something that I, I, I thought about last time we did one of these licenses. I, I find, just find it surprising that our police department doesn't have the opportunity to you know, 
Yes, unless they do, unless I, I didn't see it here. Oh, they, they signed off. Yeah, they signed off. Oh, yeah. I didn't they're, see it. They're in, it's, it's, it's in here. It's oh, it's in, in here? here? Yeah. yeah. But uh, and I do have a question to like, ask. Like Mr. O'Leary, I have the same concern. I don't think I under fully understood what the change, the impact of the change was going to be. So I would presume the neighborhood doesn't understand the change with this. Um, if we allow this, what the change would be and the impact could be down in that area. Uh, does anyone have the notice that was actually sent? Oh, put in the paper. Does anyone um, have that notice? I don't have an actual cutout version of it, but there's a, a copy of. Is it uh, just a similar language that we have here in the notice? Yes, of it's, a, it's exactly the language that's there. Right. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes. Uh, you. The the purpose of you making this change. It is a big, significant change, as uh, uh, we're beginning to acknowledge. But is your was your purpose? more brunch oriented or was it uh, intended to expand the full extent of the Vidler license it, and, the, and the all alcohol license? Mr. Hannon is our, our <coughs> house chairman of the club. So. Charlie Hannon, 10 Kristen Lane, North Reading. Um, to answer both questions, that we originally anticipated to open it up to brunch to see what the impact would be for revenue. Uh, as I think all of us in the room know of anybody, but clubs, golf clubs in particular, are really hurting for membership, thus revenue producing uh, streams. One of the things we looked at as a board is to see if we could open a restaurant up as a restaurant to the public to generate revenue. Uh, because right now we just, with the lack of membership, not only for our club, but all the clubs in the area, and there are other clubs in the area do the exact same thing. We're proposing to do. That's the reason for the change. And it certainly, I don't foresee the restaurant opening up at 8 o'clock in the morning till midnight. No, I, 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 don't, I don't see that at all. Uh, <laughs> and to your point, currently we do a lot of functions, so there is a lot of traffic. It certainly is not what it would be if we open it up to the restaurant. Hopefully, we'd like to be very busy every day, obviously. But, uh, so. Mr. Hannon, it, it looks like you're going for the full uh, all alcohol license, uh, would you or did you consider just a weekend license uh, well, so that you could uh, concentrate on uh, only that time frame and, and keep it under control with the uh, brunch scenario? Uh, I mean, brunch is brunch. It's, it's pretty, pretty simple. So but whereas you, you're extending it over to uh, through the week, and so I think that's part of the concern. Right, so, and, and, I, and I can appreciate the concern. The reason we did it that way, Mr. O, was strictly hoping to produce a revenue stream that would supplement the, the income to the club. Currently, we're just, uh, we're really teetering right now. I mean, we lose many more members than the Tonkin Country Club, as we see it, would not be available to, the, to anybody. So we just. That sounds like you'd be looking to maximize the use of it, and that's what that, that, you're absolutely. saying Absolutely. Well, I said not from 8 a.m., but no, yes, I, don't I would not say that we would look at it just for Saturday and Sunday. I mean, Something we would look to try and get two, some business. Two or three. Right, right now, right. We're, we're looking at it as a, a template on <laughs> Sundays, giving it a, a, a trial period, see how it works, see, see if there's interest in, and be able to go forward from there. Liquor licenses don't give you the availability to pick and choose how you want it. It's a, right. it's a full liquor license. Either it's convicular or it's club. You can't have it both ways. You can't have it half and half. It's either one or the other. Um, this is what was explained to us through uh, to the board, uh, uh, secretary's office. Uh, we called the ABCC. Uh, same thing. It's either one or the other. So we had to change the liquor license to the convicular. We can't just do weekends. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Would, would uh, we we can set standards uh, for you? Uh, we can. Uh, agreed to the license and say that uh, uh, you would close at certain times or only be open at certain times. We could do that. I think uh, we've discussed that with other restaurants. I think the problem is that I don't think no. we could pass it out that way. They're, right. They're right. membership well, club. They're not looking to give up their membership. Right. And what they're looking to do is expand to allow the general public in. So I don't think we can do that. I'd like to see us just postpone this hearing this evening. I think we do need to do a better job of just notifying the general public, certainly the-, the He already did. The re he already notified them. I, I think the town needs to notify 
the public 